Welcome to MCN and our series of videos where we talk to MCN staff about the long-term test bikes they've been running in 2021. And today it's all about Allison's, hello there. Hello. Yamaha Tracer 9 GT. Now Allison is MCN's office manager and basically the, the glue that holds the whole ship together. And this bike is probably one of the bikes of the year in terms of kind of interest, what it can do, it's a fantastic all-rounder. And, um, but the first thing I want to ask you before we pile into the bike, yeah. just give me a bit of an idea about your riding experience. Uh, I've been riding for about 15 years and in that time I've stepped up from small um, middleweight bikes to sort of 600cc. I've had the Chaser 900 GT Previous prior model. to this yeah. and last year I ran the BMW F900 XR. So this was a really good comparison to then get onto this one. Yeah, a really good They're similar comparison. types of bike, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. The first question I'd ask about it is: it is it manageable? I mean, how tall are you? I'm five foot ten, and I've got quite a long inside leg. It's about 32, 33 inches. So height-wise, it's absolutely perfect. I can flat foot. Moving around the garage, it is quite heavy. So I tend to sit on it and paddle mm. rather than actually manoeuvring it around um, with me not sitting on it just purely because it's a more of a confidence thing because it is reasonably heavy if it goes away from you yeah, yeah i'd be a bit nervous of it so i tend to i tend to sit on it to do the paddling but yeah the sort of riding that i do um not many commutes to the office at the moment obviously no. with the current situation but yeah it's fine motorway stuff to nip down to the office and a lot of my stuff's touring so yeah it's perfect for that what about around town slow speed it's not too bad once you get used to the width I mm. always work on the theory if the, f the front goes through, the panniers mm. will go through. So yeah. they're fractionally wider, not much, but just fractionally. So yeah, it's actually quite good because it's very upright to do slow speed stuff. It's actually really decent. Panniers are standard on the GT, aren't they? Yeah, on the GT, these uh, colour match panniers. Colour match. Yeah, so the little, nice little red panel. Nice. Yeah, so no, they're good. And compared to the previous model, the panniers have been totally redesigned, so they're slightly larger. Okay, we'll have a well. look at that later. Yeah. Um, and how long have you had it, and how many miles have you done? It's done nearly 7,000 miles, and I've been running it since May. Um, so, yeah, I, I rode it for about six months, and then recently I haven't been riding it, but because mm. um, I had a, a minor operation, so it's been in the garage for a couple of months. But up to then, I was on it most, most weekends out and about. Yeah, we're, Jan we're in January now. It's cold out there as well, isn't mm. it? Um, so what about the kind of reliability of it and the, the build quality, how's that been? I've had absolutely no issues with uh, build quality and reliability. The only thing I have noticed is the front um, header pipes have yeah. discoloured quite badly, um, which isn't nice just from an attractive point of view. It hasn't made any difference to the way the bike runs, yeah. obviously, um, and everything else is pretty much as good as it was on the day it came out yeah. of the factory. So. I mean, it's still a young bike because it's, mm. it's not even a year old, so it should look good, but you've done a lot of miles, so yeah. that's normally, that's a few years use for mm. Yeah, for a lot of people, average, it's a couple it? of three years use, yeah. isn't it? And this is a completely childish question I'm going to ask you, Yeah. but how fast does it go? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> it indicates uh, on the screen that it does nearly 160, really? but true, it's around 145, 146 miles an hour, so there's a slight discrepancy <clears throat> on the speedo. That's fast, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, obviously I mind... haven't done those speeds, no, not on the motorbikes. No, exactly. yeah. <laughs> so for relatively, I mean, it's not a multi-strada, it's not a big cubed superbike no. tall roader, is it? It's, uh, it's a triple 900 odd cc, isn't yes. it? So that's, that's yeah. quick. It's quick. Yeah, it's decent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I did the launch of this last year, and one of the things you notice when you're riding is this strange dash. Yes. This split dash that almost looks like a face, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not the most attractive. How do you, you get on with that? Let's turn it on. Personally, I think it's a little bit odd. Mm. Um, with having the information that you've got, on the left-hand screen, you can get pretty much all the same information as then shows on the right-hand screen. Mm. And to my mind, they've missed a real trick because I think the using the right-hand screen would be great to have a sat-nav mm. on it. It'll turn by turn. Yeah, there's yeah. absolutely no connectivity where other, like the BMW that I ran last year, connected up to oh, an app on your phone and as a sat nav and everything. This would be a really good mm. use of the space. It is, yeah, it just seems a little bit strange. And every box on the right hand side 
you can actually put exactly the same information in. So yeah. I just, yeah. It's a bit I, odd, isn't it? It's strange and it doesn't look particularly attractive. I've got no. used to it. Yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not What about controlling the it? These, these buttons are really messy, I think. The worst thing is the menu button on this on side here, because it's on a wheel. Um, it's it. also on your right hand. So Why do you want to be doing the yeah. yeah, and things like the heated grips are controlled through it, which I just think are silly. Mm. They should be on a separate button on the left rather than having to roll through. Quite often I end up having to stop to sort out the yeah. heated grips, which... And then the logo on the screen for the heated grips is tiny, tiny isn't it? Yeah, the only benefit with them is that there's 10 settings now. So it's got a real They're vast... Hot, aren't they? Yeah, They're and really hot good. is very hot. Um, but yeah, getting to getting to them is just, yeah, silly. What about the other electronics on the bike? You've got electronic suspension, you've got a quick shifter. Yeah, quick yeah. shifter up and down cool. the box. Is that um, good? Yeah, it's brilliant. I love it um, to the point of... Yeah. When I get on any other bike that hasn't got one now, I go yeah. trying to move the gears and it, yeah. it doesn't obviously work in the same way. And the suspension is really easy to swap around different settings if you're doing different sort of riding. And do, you, do you use that function? Yes, I have done. Um, if I want to go out and do a you know, bit more of a fun ride, if I'm not aiming to get somewhere and mm. just going out for a, a bit of a fun ride, yes, have it in the sports setting. And But I normally run it in the, the other more and softer nice setting. And comfortable? Yeah, absolutely. What about cruise control as well, isn't it? Standard. Yeah, I'm not a fan of cruise control, but I do use it if I'm on long trips or if you're going through average speed cameras where you know you yeah. you might get caught out. I yeah. set it on those as well. But yeah, I'm not a massive fan of the cruise control. Um, so, moving around to the front of the bike, this screen here, yes. bit of a bone of contention. When I yep. did the launch, I thought it was really, really noisy. And that, that's really, it's not the Yamaha's fault. All of these tall Venture style bikes are the same because you've yeah. got a real steep screen. You've got lots of bits sticking out in the wind that cause um, wind buffeting. So how have you found it? Awful. So the first thing I did <clears> was swapped it to exactly the same screen that I put on the other Yamaha that I had previously. This is a screen from MRA. And as you can see, it's got the extra attachment, mm. the little flip up, so you can multi like different positions. So you can put that bit in different this, positions. This bit changes as and does the screen. It fits it on the down. original fitments of the screen and then moves up and down. It's about 115 pounds and it's well worth the investment. It's still noisy. Mm. It's not, you can't say it's silent by any means, but it's such a difference. Yeah. Absolutely. It doesn't yeah. detract from the riding no. pleasure anymore. No, not at all. Talking of which, is it comfortable? I see you've got a different seat on there. Yeah, I swapped the seat to the comfort seat. The standard seat's a bit hard. Um, I did, the first weekend that I had it, I decided to go for a short ride and ended up going a thousand miles up to Scotland and back um, <laughs> in two days and came back with, uh, yeah, quite a sore bottom. So I've swapped the seat to the comfort seat, which took a little bit of breaking in, yeah. but with the extra padding, now I'm used to it. It's, Makes a difference. Yeah, it does make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Plenty of leg room, arm room. Yes. Um, Perfect. It's yeah. It's not too wide as well. That's the thing with this. I find it's quite a nice seat to sit on. Yeah. And the only thing I do find when you are sitting on it, sometimes it feels a bit bulbous because of the plastic shrouding mm. around the tank. It makes it all feel a little bit yeah. bulky when you're first on it. But once you get used to it, yeah, it's fine. fine. It's a good touring bike then. Yes, yeah, lovely. Yeah. And then on these long trips, what kind of mileage do you get out of the fuel tank? About 58, 50, between 55 and 58 miles per gallon. So on the tank range, it's about 225 miles. So to be honest, I need to stop before the bike yeah. out of the two. It's usually me needs to get off um, yeah. for a comfort break rather than needing to fill the bike up. What about, it's obviously a workhorse to, to do touring, isn't it? But is, is it characterful? Is it fun? Yeah, it is fun. It's enjoyable to ride. Um, I like the responsiveness of the triple cylinder engine. Mm. I did a feature um, this year, I did a saddle saw ride with one of my colleagues and he actually rode an F900XR and halfway through we swapped because we were doing a thousand miles in 24 hours and I had a go on the XR and I'd forgotten how small it is in comparison yeah. and I got back on this and it just felt so nice like big... and much more fun and much more responsive as well. So is there anything you don't like about it or is there anything that's gone wrong or anything like that? Um, my main bone of contention is the, the fact they haven't sorted the screen out. I, I just don't understand why they mm. can't get that slightly better. And like we said, the dash, yeah, I'm not a massive fan, um, no. not a massive fan of that. But yeah, to be honest, it's quite difficult to find fault with it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a great engine, it handles well, yeah. it's comfortable, Yeah, it's relatively affordable. This is the top spec yeah. GT, isn't it? So it's, what's it, 12 and a half grand, yeah. something like that? 
So it's not yeah, a cheap so it's bike. Not, but it's not cheap, but there's others that are far more yeah. expensive that do a similar job. And it's good so, quality. So yeah, it's not as yeah. if you're not getting your money's worth. So the final question, would you buy one? To be honest, if I was going to just do lots of touring, yes, mm -hmm. I'd consider it. Um, but I think if I was going to have one in a bike that I have to do everything with, and if I were commuting on a regular basis, I'd perhaps go for something just a little bit smaller physically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, it's one of those, it's a split decision, yeah, depending yeah. on what I was going to actually buy the bike for. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, it's well worth the investment and really good if you're going to do a lot of touring. A great tour. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for showing us around your bike. Pleasure. And thank you for watching. And stay tuned for our next long-term video coming up soon.